All right. This is EOC quiz one from quarter two. We're looking at some of the older questions from quarter one that have been added. The first topic is immigration trends. These are the new immigrants that come to the United States, leading to dramatic uh, population growth. The question is, why was the population boom at the turn of the 20th century important to American industrialization? Factories, so immigrants provided labor and they were a new market to sell these manufactured goods to. So we're gonna go with B, number one is B. All right, question two. What group of people most likely inspired the creation of this cartoon? So these are, this is a new immigrant crossing into the United States that are being blocked by Americans. So who are the Americans who blocked immigrants? It's a really important vocab term. Those are the nativists. All right, so question two is D. All right, let's go to number three. A high school teacher wrote these bullet points on the whiteboard. What was the most likely topic of discussion? Escape from religious persecution, hope for freedom and equality, better economic conditions. That was that industrialization question, number one. Escape from political turmoil and war. So what would be the topic of discussion? These are reasons for immigration to the United States. Remember, these are push and pull factors that we discussed uh, a month or two ago. Okay, question four. This is, a lot of students have trouble with this one. This has to do with monopolies and trusts. The following cartoon appeared in the magazine Puck in 1889. The bosses of the Senate is the title. So who are the bosses? We see all these trusts, trusts, trusts. What does this cartoon imply about US economic policy prior to 1890? 1890 is when the Sherman Antitrust Act is passed into law. So the federal government passed laws that favored natural resource conservation. No, that's Theodore Roosevelt. That's not for another uh, 11 years. The federal government passed laws that increased market competition and decreased industrial power. That is not true. We see the power of industry here. Look at the size of them. The federal government passed laws that increased corporate taxes and increased public spending. Nope, we wouldn't tax the trust. The federal government passed laws that favored large corporations over small ones. So that is clearly the answer here. Government favored large corporations. Okay, let's go to the next question. Question five. Which of the following occurred as a result of the Sherman Antitrust Act? So what was the Sherman Antitrust? Antitrust, anti-big business, breaking up monopolies. Federal government could dissolve business monopolies. Antitrust. All right. Question six. In response to public concerns over issues raised by Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, he was a muckraker. The federal government expanded its role in, so remember, he went in to meet the slaughterhouses and the food processing centers and wrote about the issues facing workers and food. So we're talking about protecting what we eat, taking responsibility for the safety of consumers. Remember, we are consumers. We buy things. And in this case, we are actually consuming food in the story. So what, what's in our food? All right, so that's the answer. Let's go to question seven. The list below displays the titles of some books published in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. We should feel comfortable with all these books. And if you don't know all the books, you should at least know The Jungle. That's Upton Sinclair. How the Other Half Lives was Jacob Reese, the photographer of the slums in New York City. And Lincoln Steffens wrote The Shame of the Cities about party bosses and political corruption in American cities. Which significant motivation led to the publication of these works? Why were these written? Why did these muckrakers write these things? What do they want to do? The desire to create public outrage and advocate for war, definitely not. Muckrakers did not want war. The desire to advocate, create public support and advocate for unions. We already talked about unions. None of these uh, individuals wrote or were uh, union leaders. 
the desire to expose societal problems and advocate for reform. That would be the answer. They wanted Americans to know about these issues and they wanted them to push for reform, for positive change. All right, let's go to question eight. And shortly afterwards, a, a physician made the discovery that the carcasses, the dead animals of steers, these are cows, which had been condemned as tubercular, that's a disease, by the government inspectors, were left upon an open platform and carted away to be sold in the city. Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. We just talked a lot about the jungle in the previous questions. Public response to revelations such as this one excerpt led to the establishment of regulations that were eventually enforced by. So we're talking about food, animals. This is the Food and Drug Administration, FDA. Right. Question nine. Here's our first new question for quarter two. These lyrics are representative of a movement that culminated in a constitutional amendment song for the grand old temperance. And we talked about temperance in class. That's uh, not drinking, that's prohibition to abstain from alcohol. That is bearing goodly fruit, it's blessings everywhere we see. We praise it, branch and root, we'll plant it whenever rum shops are in our native land so far till its noble branches spread afar on the golden sunny air. So we see talking about rum, rum shops. Oh, we'll gather round the temperance tree to sing our songs of joy till the viper that is in the cup, so that's alcohol, shall no more destroy. Till the viper in the cup shall no more destroy. So uh, the temperance movement was a movement to, to prevent alcoholism. It was widespread issues. Um, workers were coming home from the factories and going to saloons. There was an anti-saloon movement. Uh, they were spending their paychecks at these saloons and not bringing it home to their families. So they felt like the alcohol was, was really bad. These rum shops, the, the viper that is in the cup is alcohol. So the real question is, uh, what movement culminated in the constitutional amendment? Well, we haven't talked about the Harlem Renaissance yet. We haven't talked about the New Deal. We've talked about Reconstruction and the Progressive Era. But which one was all about reforming the Gilded Age? Which one pushed for progress and reform? Remember, the progressive age wanted to fix a lot of these problems. So we're going to go with J. Okay, question 10. We're almost done here. Read the source and answer the questions. We watched a video, a really good video on this. The Senate of the United States shall be composed of two senators. Remember, each state gets to send two senators to Congress. Elected by the people for six years. And each senator shall have one vote. 17th Amendment. What change was created by this amendment? Well, we talked about, we took notes on the 17th Amendment. We watched a video on the 17th Amendment. We know that prior to the 17th Amendment, state legislatures selected and voted on the senators, not the people of the states. So the progressive movement wanted to return voting power to the people. So they passed and they ratified the 17th Amendment so that the citizens of the state voted, elected by the people to choose their senators. So the power to choose U.S. senators was taken away from state legislatures and returned to the people. That was one of the goals of the progressive movement. All right, question 11. There is hereby created an agency which purposes to conserve. Conservation is such an important word for our class, conserving the environment the scenery, natural and historical objects, and the wildlife. So the wildlife, scenery, that's all clues. Which agency's name belongs on the blank line? We know it was passed by Woodrow Wilson in 1916. It's the National Park Service. Talked a lot about conservation in classes when we started talking about Theodore Roosevelt. All right, let's keep moving. Question 12. In 1913, President Woodrow Wilson made the following statement in a speech before Congress. The control of the system of banking must be vested in the government so that the banks may be the instruments, not the masters of business and of individual enterprise and initiative. According to President Wilson's address, which statement justifies the establishment of the Federal Reserve? Remember the Federal Reserve system established uh, regional banks 
that set uh, that printed currency, controlled the money supply, set interest rates, maintained the overall health and well-being of America's economy. It's the beating heart of our, our economic system. So it's not talking about workplace protections. It's not talking about labor unions. It's talking about banking. New regulations protect stock investors. That's not going to happen yet. Establish control over monetary policy, money, 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 and banking. Monetary is money. So we're going to go with D. Okay, two more. Question 13. Founded in 1913, the Congressional Unions for Women's Suffrage. You have to know what suffrage means in our class. Suffrage is the right to vote. Talk about women's right to vote. Women couldn't vote when the Constitution was was created in the United States to, to control the United States form of government. Only men could vote, white men, not even uh, African-American men could vote yet until the 15th Amendment. Political activism of this group described the expert contributed directly to what? So these women formed groups, they're pushing for suffrage. We watched some really great videos about the women's suffrage movement. So what do they want? What We need to know what the women's suffrage amendment is. So it's not poll taxes. That's not going to happen until the 1960s with the Voting Rights Act. The 18th Amendment's prohibition. We just read that song about prohibition, about banning alcohol. So this is not about prohibition. Outlawing of child labor, that is not what they're pushing for here. It's the 19th Amendment is women's suffrage. So the answer is J. And question 14, our final question for the first quiz. How did Tennessee play an important role in the legalization of women's suffrage? What role did Tennessee play? We watched that video was great. As a matter of fact, if you did the quarter two DBQ readings, there's a video about when Tennessee's role in ratifying the 19th Amendment. Tennessee was the last chance really for women to get uh, the 75% of states needed to ratify the 19th Amendment and they didn't think they had the votes, but fortunately, a member of uh, the state legislature changed his mind and he voted to support and ratify the 19th Amendment. So although it was unpopular in the South, um, a lot of Southerners didn't want women to have the right to vote. And in particular, they didn't want African-American women to have the right to vote. We talked a lot about segregation and racism in the South, but Tennessee is kind of a mid-state. It was the first to rejoin the Union following the Civil War, a little bit more moderate of a state. So Tennessee provided the deciding vote in passing the 19th Amendment. So the answer is B. So important, Tennessee history. It was the 100th anniversary last year of Tennessee being the last state needed to ratify the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. And that's it. That's the first 14 answers of all your quizzes for quarter two.